and you're moving from place to place, place. Good morning, good morning, morning, good morning. Good morning, viewers. Again, we are back and we continue on with our interviews. We have this morning with us Nikosi Phillips, political leader, who will be telling us a little bit about the Sea Bridge Wars that we have been experiencing. Right, so good morning, Nikosi Phillips. Good morning to you, um, our host, and good morning to Tobago Updates. Good morning to our listening public, Trinidad and Tobago, and everyone who's locked on this morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm tired. My computer isn't working. Phone is shut down. I have technical difficulties, but I am glad to have a backup this morning. So I have life, and I must thank God for life. Good morning. All right. Thank you very much. So we'll go straight into it, right? So the dry spell that Tobago would have been experiencing or is experiencing as a result of the sea bridge, would you say that it was unavoidable? Um, <laughs> nothing is unavoidable in this Trinidad and Tobago space. Um, the fact of the matter is that this would have given us up again how many times government has to act in the position of waiting on something to happen in order to have a backup. Um, I think it is high time we as government or whatever government is in power, whether in Trinidad and Tobago, we think futuristically, not just having one boat, looking at one, one boat shot so what is the backup plan and what is the initiative. So I think this gives us an open eye on eye opener as to now preparing for the future that we need more than one cargo boat and we need more fast ferries that if anything in the event like this should happen again, we have a backup and we don't have to resort to something like what we have. And at the end of the day, we still do have a backup and we have to work with what we have until what is replaced and until the cargo size is replaced. All right. And in terms of Tobago's dependency on Trinidad being magnified as a result of the situation, could you give us your perspective on that? This is very, it's very simple. The dependency on Trinidad clearly shows that Tobago is not ready enough for autonomy. And even though we were enough of ready for autonomy, what is our backup plan? What is our contingent plan to have things in place? We clamor for, or the chief secretary or the team, they clamor for autonomy. But what is your backup plan for autonomy? How do you have resources in the Tobago space without being dependent on Trinidad? And this is a clear example of stating that we are not ready. And even though we were ready, what is the backup plan? And you know, everybody only using the word autonomy. I've seen in, I've seen people commenting that, oh, if we had the autonomy, we had the autonomy. If you had the autonomy, what? Would you have bought your own vessels? Would you have all your own cargoes? So it clearly shows that we are still dependent on goods and services from Trinidad. And the narrative that is being pushed that, oh, we want to separate from Trinidad, we want own autonomy to do this and to do that. We do not have any manufacturing companies in Trinidad, in Tobago. We do not have the resources of pushing a great agri agricultural development um, sustainability for the people of Tobago to have food to eat. We still have to get all our resources from Trinidad, and that clearly shows that the world autonomy should be put to rest until we can have a, 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 an administration that is competent enough to sustain the economy and have the economy at its level where we can be non-dependent on Trinidad. Okay, so now that we have an interim vessel, the Empendadora, my apologies for the wrong pronunciation of the word, right? Do you believe that this will provide the Tobagonians with the relief that we so desire because you have been mentioning autonomy? So will this provide the relief that we need? Um, this is just a temporary solution, and I do commend the Port Authority of Trinidad and Tobago and the stakeholders for having this um, temporary solution. Um, I think it will provide some sort of a relief as to goods and services still coming between the, uh, the inter-island services of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we must stop being hypocritical. We are calling, oh, we want a backup, we want something, we want something, we want something, people are suffering no goods. We do have a replacement just for now. It is not like it's going to be for two months or three months. Um, as the, the port authority says, that the vessel is being fixed. And within two weeks from now or so, 
it should be back once it's approved by the um the relative authorities it should be back so at this point in time whatever we have that is working for us temporarily we should accept it and i am sure that the port authority will put things in place that it will be accessible for persons to bring their goods and services to trinidad and tobago i think people in tobago some of us need to just come down sleep and don't say anything because we have a solution right now we have a temporary solution but yet it is still not comforting and the people who are complaining are the ones who are not even self making a, a contribution to society they're just blabbing blabbing on social media so at this point in time i I don't know about the truckers, if it's comfortable for them, but as a political leader who's holding a, a consensus of the people, different views, I think it is a solution that is temporary for now, and we have to work with what we have. At least we have a vessel to move it instead of not having anything at all to go between the inter-island ferry services. Okay, so you also, you mentioned the truckers, you know, as Tobagonians moving from Tobago to Trinidad to do their business, etc., etc., right? You have a view on how this temporary solution would affect us. But how do you think in general it would affect a Tobagoans thinking of central government in light of the situation? Um, it, 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 you see, everything is politics. Any little thing happen is central government, you blame the PNM, you blame in this. It's a political game. And at the end of the day, we should stop the politicking and find solutions of moving forward. Um, what are the solutions? The solutions is we need to have a relationship, a proper relationship. This administration has to have a proper relationship with the government, central government, and the Minister of Works. Let us now have a conversation as to, okay, good. We do need more vessels. We need a cargo vessel that will be able to work within the space of Tobago just in case something happens. We need a next vessel. Conversations is what needs to be had. And the, the narrative will continue to be there and people will continue to say things are negative and stuff but it, it all has to deal with communication and it has to deal with the commitment of the government and central government leading a commitment to having that inter-island ferry service whether it is the fast ferries or the cargo boat that it must be able to have an accessibility for the people of tobago to access goods and services on trinidad and vice versa Okay, so as we are wrapping up, I give, I'm asking you a personal question. So as a Tobagonian, are you satisfied or what would you have done differently to curb the situation? As a Tobagonian, um, I am not satisfied because anything like this is not a satisfaction at all, period. Because as I said, we can't just wait until things happen in order to put things in place that it still doesn't make sense. But as, as, some, as a Tobago and as a political leader now going forward, um, the conversation, as I said, has to happen where things have to be put in place that this does not happen again. The Port Authority now has to have dialogue with both the Tobago House of Assembly and the government of, of a way moving forward. And how do we now put things in place where we can have more vessels to um, channel this boat sea bridge going forward? And as I said, it's conversation, it's dialogue. You see, we have to put aside the politics in order to maintain the, the, the stability for our people. And if we as politicians continue to push this night, let me blame the PNM, let me blame the UNC, let me blame the PDP, it will continue to have the stupidity of narratives that are pushing out. There was a politics thing, it's a politics thing. So as I said in closing, it's a conversation that the Tobago House of Assembly has to have with the central government and the government of Trinidad and Tobago as a way forward on putting things in place by having a new vessel. We need to have a next vessel, a cargo vessel, just in, in the event that this happens again or is the next overheating or whatever the cause may be, that we do not have a situation of waiting for goods and services from Trinidad and Trinidad to Tobago. All right. Thank you very much. And this actually brings us to the end of our interview. I think we as Tobagoans, we all look forward to seeing what the progress is based on our sea bridge was as we would have mentioned this morning right so thank you nikosi phillips that is the political leader of the unity of the people for joining us this morning thank you very much for having me and you all have a wonderful day and god bless trinidad and tobago thank you you too all right thank you for joining us this morning on the youth wednesday tobago update show we continue on this morning with Miss Candice Jackson, who will take us into GMT.